It's official, I'm starting a new hardcore world. And I promise you, this world is going to be much better than the first one. I'm not gonna be wasting numerous of episodes on things I can do in one. So this video is gonna have four phases. Phase one is get yourself in the air phase. Like, come on, do I even need to explain this phase? Phase number two is getting infinite amounts of totems of Vendayan and emeralds. This is the inflation does not exist. Here you go, have yourself a raid farm phase. Phase number three is getting the best armor slash tool slash weapons aka becoming terminator phase. And then phase four is building every single farm I will need in this world. And this is the boy tries to be a redstoner phase. And with everything out of the way, let's start with this new hardcore world. We're back to the basics of the game. Chop, 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 chop. All right, that should be enough for now. Let's get a crafting table, get a wood pickaxe, and some stone, of course. And just like that, we got ourselves our tools. I'm gonna use this boat and try to find myself a village. Hopefully, I can find one near spawn so I can take it over and live there. Bruh, I forgot about food. Alright, village, where are you at? Beautiful, beautiful, we got one. I'm taking over your home, I'm taking over your job, bro, I'm even taking your wife. Okay, bro, relax, I'm joking. We got a bunch of hay bills everywhere, so food is not a problem anymore. I'm gonna start farming sugar canes so I can create a bunch of rockets before I go to the end. I heard you haven't paid your taxes this year, so I'm gonna take some stuff from your home. Bro, 10 apples? Even more? This is going to be the spot. Sweet, sweet dreams. I wanna kill the ender dragon as fast as possible, so the first thing I have to do is get obsidian. Well, technically, first I have to get some diamonds. You can call me Mr. Iron, okay? Since I got everything iron, you can call me Iron Man. What a disappointment of a cave is this? It doesn't even go that deep. I got a better idea. I'm gonna try to get diamonds from stranded ships. Ooh, I see you, I see you. This gold is perfect for the nether. Alright, the first ship. Let's see. Ooh, we got a diamond! A treasure map, I'm gonna take that. That took way longer than it should have. And uh, no diamond. Come on, bro. Alright, ship. Bless me with a diamond. Yeah, no diamond, but we got a treasure map. Don't mind me taking your gold block. Alright, please give me a diamond. Please, please. Oh my god. This is like the fifth ship. Come on, just give me a diamond. Alright, I have a feeling this is going to be the one. This is going to be the one. Please, 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 please. Bruh. I'm getting so much stuff, but come on, please. All I'm asking is a diamond. Bro, no way. This is the goofiest treasure chest ever. <laughs> oh, no diamond. If I remember correctly, there was a trick with the clay that you can find guaranteed diamonds underneath them. Okay, either the TikTok was fake or this thing is just patched. And scammer gets scammed, buddy. Okay, okay. I, I, I found one. I found one. My diamond. My diamond. <laughs> you can't use gold. Oh! All right, no problem. I got another diamond right over here. Please be more than just one. Please. All right, three diamonds. Let's get that diamond pickaxe. As soon as I have enough obsidian to get a portal, I'm getting out of here. Okay, let's go. I'm gonna drop off everything I just looted and then we are going to the nether. All right, all right, let's go. Bro, what a stupid spawn. No way. Never mind, I take my words back. There's a nether fortress down over there. All it takes is one stupid guest to take me back to the menu. I better be careful in this bridge. All right, that was easy. I definitely did not poop in my pants. I have to get blaze rods as fast as possible. I do not want to stay any second longer. Perfect, blaze rods. You know what's not that perfect? Almost dying. Oh, no, 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 no. I got more than enough of blaze rods. I'm gonna loot this fortress and then I'm getting out of here. Bad. Good. Very bad. Come on, also bad. Okay. Yeah, I, I can't expect a lot. Okay, this, this fortress is just insanely bad. All right, whatever. We got our blaze rods. Now we have to get ourselves some ender pearls. First, I'm going to use all of the gold I have to trade with these guys and try to get some ender pearls. I got about four ender pearls after spending like a stack of gold. This is not good. You know what? I have a better idea. Some people wait for endermen until nighttime. Some people trade with piglings to get ender pearls. But this boy right over here loves to trade them. We got so many apples, we have gold, we can basically turn a villager into a zombie and heal him to get very, very cheap ender pills. I'm gonna trap more villagers just to be safe that zombies don't kill any of them. Enjoy your new stay, boys. This one right over here will be the villager that's gonna turn into a zombie. Alright, I'm gonna clock him as a cleric. Alright, zombie, here you go, have some dinner. Okay, don't hit me. Alright, now we have to create a potion of weakness. We got a potion, we got a golden apple, let's give this guy his life back. 
While I'm waiting on the guy to turn, I'm gonna destroy this village. Yes, you heard me correctly. I'm gonna destroy this entire village because I wanna live here and I do not want to live in a village. Now I should be able to trade emeralds for ender pearls very cheaply. And there we go. 10 ender pearls. Let's go. I need more emeralds, so I'm gonna create a mason villager, turn him into a zombie to get very, very cheap emeralds for clay. Uh, actually, we don't need to turn this guy into a zombie. We can just treat like this. All right, we got enough of ender pearls. Now I have to wait until it's night time to get phantoms. I need the membrane they drop to brew potions of slow falling. While I'm waiting on phantoms, I'm just gonna destroy this entire place. Oh, I completely forgot about creepers. I also need gunpowder to create rockets before I go to the end. Alright, this is stupid. I've literally almost destroyed this entire village. It's been like three nights and there's still no phantoms. Maybe if I build higher up and just wait, they will spawn? Okay, I just read that phantoms are scared of cats. Now, there are a lot of cats running around over here. So maybe because of that, they don't spawn in the village. So next night, I'm gonna go away from the village and maybe then we'll get some phantoms. My theory better be working. I can hear him. I can hear him. Yes, 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 yes. It's working. I I'm so smart. I'm, I'm so smart. All right. Membranes are acquired. Now we can go and fight the ender dragon. There's only one house left. So I'm going to destroy this before I go and do the fight. Would you look at that? I literally destroyed an entire village to get this membrane. I was able to get two sacks of rockets. And I think that's enough to loot a bunch of end cities in the end. Let's find that stronghold, boy. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Another one. Come on, come on, come on. Bro. Okay, went underground. So I guess it's somewhere down over here. Would you take a look at that? I need this cup up later. So I'm gonna get it now so I don't have to come over here again. I can also get some books right over here. And there it is. We found the end portal. All right, this is it. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Get away from me. Get away from me. Not me waiting five days to get potions of slow falling and then not bringing them to the end. I mean, we all make mistakes sometimes. I think I can take this beehive with a silk touch pickaxe. Yeah, there we go. All right, give me my potions back. All right, everything is ready. Let's get this thing started. Boy, 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 let's go. I'm gonna try to kill this guy as fast as possible, but of course, safety is always number one priority. I'm not gonna risk it. I'm gonna drink one of these guys. First try, let's go. This thing does not want to hit it. Come on, just hit. Oh my God. Come on. Oh, there we go. Can I hit it first try? Nice. As long as I don't get hit, the ones with the bars are easy. This should be the last one. Oh no, never mind. Oh my God. This is the reason why you should have snow falling potions. Man, how are there three more left? I thought I got them all. First try. Nice. Bro, 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 bro. Please, 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 please. Chill, 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 chill. Chill. Bro, oh, this guy's following me. Get in the boat. Nice. Please, no, no, no. Please, please, please. Don't, don't let me die like this. Don't let me die like this. Oh. Oh my god, my heart. All right, all of the towers are broken. Now we can start killing the dragon. All right, the fight is pretty easy right now. All we have to do is wait until this guy purges, and then we can hit him really easy. All right, gentlemen, let me hit you a couple of times. I think we only need two more purges, and then we kill the dragon. Come, come, come to me. Die, 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 die. All right, this should be the last purge. Let's kill this guy, get the dragon egg, and then look for an end city, because I need my Elytra ASAP. And there we go. We did it. We killed the dragon. Let's go. Let me block this thing so I can catch all of the XP. No, 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 don't go inside of the portal. Stay outside of the portal. All right, there we go. The first item of phase one is gathered. We have the dragon egg. Now we have to go through the end gate to find some end cities. Man, I hope we have good spawns. Bro, ain't no way. <laughs> oh, come on. I don't even have enough blocks, bro. How am I supposed to bridge out and look for an end city? There better be an end city near me because I don't want to keep on bridging everywhere. Imagine I throw myself in the vote. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Oh, no, 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 no. Man, I have to be careful with ender pearls. I can't mess around with them. Nah, this place is depressing. Like, there's literally nothing over here. Like, I can't wait for an actual end update because we need it. Oh, there it is. There it is. Finally, bro. Finally. This took so long. As soon as I have my Elytra, I can find a lot of these guys very, very easy. All right, all right, all right. Uh, 
Nice. And there we go. There it is. Ooh, a diamond shovel. Let's go. But of course, the most important item is the Elytra. There we go. We got the second item of phase one. Technically, phase one is over, but phase one is not done until I looted a ton of end cities. All right, Shulker, can you die, please? Come on, die. Okay, finally. Ah, uh, I'm so hyped to fly. Let's raid every single end city we can find until we don't have any storage left. Right, first chest. Uh, okay, I'll take the looting swords. What do we have? Oh, a diamond pickaxe. Let's go. Yeah, this can turn badly really quickly. I have to be careful. All right, these are the last two shulkers in this end city. Come on. <gasps> what? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Chill out, chill out, bro. Why are you, why are you coming over here? Whoa, whoa. Oh, yeah, I gotta be careful with these things. Anyways, let's go. Let's go. We are back. Phase one is officially over. The amount of end cities I've looted is insane. Take a look at this chest. Look at the amount of elytras. <laughs> look at the amount of tools. We got more than a stack of shulker shells. This is insane. All right, everything is nice and cleaned up. Now we can start with phase two. In this phase, I'm going to be creating a stacking rate farm. Stacking rate farms will give us access to infinite amounts of emeralds, totems of endiums, redstone, gunpowder, and a lot of other stuff. For those of you that are wondering, what is a stacking rate farm? Well, I'm going to teach you. A second raid farm is a construction that tricks the game into launching numerous amounts of raids at the same time. This farm was designed by the legend enx 4 There's a big tower filled with water and bubbles with villager cells. Every time we hit an armor stand, the bubble chains and they trigger observers. Those observers will trigger pistons and because of that, villagers will keep changing their careers. Whenever a villager changes careers, a new raid starts. Well, at least that's what I think happens. Now raiders can't spawn anywhere else since this entire thing is built on top of an ocean, so they spawn on top. The top is very small, so the normal sized mobs can fall through the base since it's constantly being shifted by pistons. The big boy ravagers can't fall through the hole so they clip in the walls and they burn to death. And yeah, th that was a stack and raid farm. Shout out to enx 4 Bruh, I was about to get the stuff for the raid farm and then I realized something. I don't even have enough villagers to create the raid farm. So I guess I have to make a villager breeder before I can actually make the raid farm. Bro, did you just say I don't need to explain how villagers make babies? Like, come on. I'm the teacher, you're the student. Villagers like to make babies once they have enough food and an extra bed. We can take advantage of their needs by using an easy trick. All we do is lock two villagers in a farm and in one side of the farm we place beds. But here's the trick. Big villagers can't get to the beds because we block them with trap doors. Big villagers start making a baby for the bed. Big villagers make baby. Baby tries to get in the bed, but big hole in front of the baby. Baby fall in the hole, bed no more have villager. So big villagers try again. Make baby, make baby, make baby. This farm was designed by Romer GFX. Go check him out. This farm is really, really easy to create. All we have to do now is get two villagers inside of it. All right, so the first one is in. And the second one is also inside. I actually forgot about the carrots. Uh, the villagers won't breed until they have food. Okay, now they should be able to breed and this thing is done. I guess while they're breeding, I'm going to collect the items for the raid farm. This is editing Mogwin. I wanted to speed this part up even faster, but it doesn't allow me. So allow me to do a shameless plug during the video. Yo, you there. Are you enjoying the video? Hit the subscribe button down below. What are you waiting on? Come on, go, 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 go. So we got all of the materials and now we can actually start with the raid farm. So the farm has to be built in the middle of the ocean, but luckily we have a big one right behind our base. I think this is going to be the spot. Yes, I am ready to do this. Alright, so the villager cells are made, now we have to place 5 villagers inside of the raid farm. I do have some extra villagers over here, I'm gonna use these guys first and then I'm gonna use the ones that are inside of the breeder. Uh, this guy has a job, I can't use villagers that have a job, I need normal villagers. Oh, this guy also has a job, come on bro. Ah, there we go, this one does not have a job. I should have closed their shelter, I left it open and I don't want them to turn into zombies. Uh, they probably will be fine, so I'm not gonna worry about them. 
So all I have to do is push them inside of the water column. They will go. Huh? Uh. Oh, come on. Do I really have to restart my game? That glitch is so annoying. So as I was saying, all I have to do is get this guy on top. Just go inside of it and then push him in the water column. He will go all the way to the top. Now at the top, we've marked these spots and they basically have to fall down there. Now if I break the composer, he will fall in his cell. So you have to drop like four villagers in those spots, but I already have done three of them and you just saw the fourth one. So I'm basically done with that part. Now I do need the fifth villager on the top, but I have no idea why he's there. So once this guy is on top, we only have to make the killing chamber and then the farm is basically done. Please do not glitch again. It glitched again. Now the farm is basically done, we need two specific things before we can actually start using the farm. One of the items that we need is a specific sword, we need a very good sword that has looting, sweeping edge, unbreaking, mending and sharpness 5. Now we can do that by combining the swords we already have. And then the second thing we need is bad omen. Alright, so we got the sword, now we need to find a outpost. When I was looking for ships, I found a outpost and I wrote down the coordinates, so now we only have to go there and actually kill a guy with a flag. You guys need to relax. Oh my god, so many of them. There you are, sir. Can I take your bad omen? Nice. I have built this farm so many times, but I've also failed this farm so many times, so I'm hoping it works. Oh, it's, it's working. It's working. Wait. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. I, uh, I forgot sweeping edge. I need to put sweeping edge on my sword before I can start the farm. I got sweeping edge and now I have to get back to the outpost and get bad omen again. All right, sir. Thank you for the bad omen. Let's get back to the farm. All right. So the moment of truth. Let's see if this thing is actually working. All right. Everything looks fine. Is it working though? Is it working? Oh, yes, it is working. Oh my god, my, my ears are blown off. Oh, look at it. Bro, I've built this farm so many times, but yet I always get excited when I use it. The amount of stuff this thing gives you is insane. It should be illegal on servers. All right, I've used the farm for about five minutes. Let's see how much loot we got. All right, the moment of truth. Oh my god. <laughs> no way bro this this is actually insane oh no 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 look at this guys look at totems of undying we get infinite totems of undying infinite emeralds oh look at this once i have access to a lot of iron i'm gonna extend the storage system and it's just gonna be insane i can officially say phase two is completed we have access to infinite amounts of emeralds and infinite amounts of totems of undying now we can start with phase three now with all of the materials we have and access to infinite amounts of emeralds, I think we can complete this phase really quickly. So the first thing I need is a mending villager. Yeah, this is uh, gonna take a while I think. My man just gave up, he does not want to turn into a librarian. Come on, I will guess I'll just have to wait. No, 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 I'm not gonna wait, I'm gonna get another villager because that guy is pissing me off. Alright, we have three villagers already, can you go back? Come, 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 come on, bro. All right, this guy is going to sell me armor. Yeah, I just realized I do already have a bunch of armor. So I don't know what the point of this guy even is. Man, I got a lot of emeralds. Let me flex a little bit. I already have a bunch of enchanted armor and a lot of them are good. But some enchantments are missing. So I'm going to use the armor that I just bought from the villagers. And then I'm going to combine all of the armors together to get the perfect armor. All right, so these two will go together. And now we have an insane helmet. These two will also go together and then we have a chest plate. Now these two leggings together will also give me good leggings. Now the only enchantment I still need for my boots are feather falling. I'm gonna try to trade them with the villagers. Oh, finally we have mending. Let's go. I need mending on my boots and mending on my elytra. I'm gonna lock this farmer inside there too to get golden carrots. Oh, finally we got feather falling. Okay, now we can combine all of these together to create the best boots in Minecraft. Alright, our armor is fully enchanted. We also have uh, 
perfect enchanted tools so we don't have to do that now we need netherite now there are a lot of different ways to get netherite i like to use beds now if we want to use the bed method we are going to need a lot of wool i do not have a lot of wool and i'm not planning on getting a lot of sheep well i do have a lot of emeralds we can use shepherd villagers to trade emeralds into wool the annoying thing about that is the trading cooldown luckily there's a thing called vote trading vote trading uh what vote trading is a way of trading in minecraft that lets you skip the trading cooldown there are a lot of different ways to do this but they all work the same way interact with a villager travel far away from that villager but with your trade menu still open and when you're far away from that villager you trade with him once you come back the trade is over but the villager does not know that you traded with them so you can keep on doing that over and over again I'm gonna be using ENXOS4 railway system. You got two villagers and yourself in the middle. Basically, all we do is trade with villager A while we are going to villager B. Villager A is unloaded, but the menu is still open. So once you trade with villager A, you do the same for villager B. So you keep on going from A to B to B to A to A to B to B to A to A to B. To a to B. Uh, I mean, you get it. Shout out to ENXO4, you're the best guy. All right, we only need to load in the villagers. All this really is, is a railway with two villagers and you basically just go from one side to the other side while you're trading. I did mess up a little small thing beforehand, but I fixed it and now we can officially trade with these guys. Easy. I got four more emeralds left. I'm just going to trade them normally. Look at the back. Look at the amount of XP. <laughs> oh, crazy. Because we're not with them when we trade, all of the XP stays behind. And once you're done, you got a ton of it. All right, we got a ton of wool, we got a ton of wood. Let's start with the netherrind grind. <laughs> we are done. Hey, first I'll turn all of this into gold. Take all that gold, mix it up with the netherite scrap and create myself five netherite ingots. And then we mix it up with the armor. Can't forget the sword. Never, never, never. And there we go. We are officially done with phase three. We have the best armor in Minecraft. Well, at least I think this is the best armor. Is there a better armor? We are now down to the last phase. In this phase, we will be creating every single farm we need in this world. The first farm I will be making is a Wither Skeleton Farm. Wither Skeleton Farms will give us access to Wither Heads, Coal, and Bones. Since we have a Raid Farm that gives us infinite amounts of Emeralds, and we will have a Wither Skeleton Farm that provides us with a ton of wither heads we can get infinite amounts of beacons the farm i will be using does not require any spawn proofing and it's by the legend ian x04 bro i already have built like three farms from ian in this world already what you don't just want to see how the farm is built but you actually want to know how it works say less every micro structure has a bounding box this is like the area where the structure spawns in nether fortresses are also in a bounding box in this box mobs like wither skeletons and blazes only spawn here we can make our own custom platform made out of nether bricks at the maximum height of this bounding box to replicate a nether fortress of course not only wither skeletons spawn here so we use filters to get rid of the other mobs for example we place walls in certain ways on top of the platform to get rid of gas and magma cubes in the corner we place turtle eggs so piglings follow it and despawn and then the only two mobs that basically stay are wither skeletons and blazes in the middle of the platform we have an iron golem that is surrounded by repeaters this way the golem can only be seen by the wither skeletons because of their height the wither skeletons run towards the golem but they go through a portal in the overworld they push each other into another portal and that portal brings them to the nether roof where i will be killing them i collected almost every item the last thing i need to do is collect a bunch of nether bricks and then i can start building this thing all right that should be everything i got all of the items i need to build this farm the fortress I have right next to my spawn is actually perfect for this farm, so I won't need to look for another one. Alright, let's start with it. Okay, so the spawning area is done. Now I have to go on top of the nether roof to create the killing chamber. All right, this should be the block and yeah, nice. This is basically done. I'm also going to create a portal at my base that connects to the nether roof so I can easily travel everywhere. All I have to do now is create the overworld bridge and then the farm should be done. All right, we are done. Let's test this farm out. I hope it works. Oh yeah, there we go. It's working. Let's do a small AFK session to get some skills.
All right, I'm back. This is the portal that brings me to the nether roof. As you can see, I did a small AFK session. I got about a shulker box filled with bones and coal. But like most importantly, we got 25 wither skulls. 25 wither skulls will basically give us eight beacons. I'm gonna kill the withers under the end portal because why should I make it harder for myself? Uh huh. Now at the moment, the main reasons why I need beacons is to clean out the spawn area. If you didn't know, the spawn area in the vault is actually always loaded. For example, if you create an iron spawn inside of the vault spawn, the iron farm will always produce iron, even if we're not close to the vault spawn. So all the farms that require you to go AFK near it will be built in vault spawn. If we have a bunch of beacons, we can use H2 and FNC5 pickaxes to mine everything instantly. So that's exactly what I will be doing. I've also been making a bunch of glass because I need it for a bunch of farms. But yeah, most importantly, we got ourselves 8 beacons. To power those beacons, I'm gonna use our raid farm to get a bunch of emeralds. So, I'll see you after I AFK for a little bit. Alright, we're back and we should have a bunch of emeralds. Yeah, we definitely have a- oh my god, yeah. We still have to fix the item sorter, but we'll do that later. Besides all of the item drops, this farm also gives you a ton of XP. If you go AFK overnight, I think you will get about 600 levels of XP. But anyways, I'm gonna head to the vault spawn and clear a corner out so I can start making some awesome farms. Alright, I'm back. As you can see, I've been AFKing for some time. So for the past few days, I've been clearing out a big chunk at the vault spawn. I took my time with this because it was really, really boring. But yeah, as you can see, we got a corner all cleared up. And I also built a villager breeder. Now, there's a big reason why I have a villager breeder at vault spawn. That's because I need a bunch of them. I'm gonna be making an iron farm and iron farms require a bunch of villagers. Iron farms pretty simple. When a villager is in a village, iron golems can spawn. Now villages are defined by beds, so if you have a bed with a villager in the middle of nowhere, well that's technically a village. Now when villagers are panicking, iron golems tend to spawn in to protect those villagers. We can take advantage of this mechanic. We can basically make multiple villages holding different villagers around an area. And between those villagers, we can have a zombie jumping up and down by using water and soul sand. Whenever the zombie goes up, villagers start to panic and golems can spawn in. If we make a couple of these villages and zombie jumpers around each other, we can have an insane iron golem maker. And of course, when the golems spawn in, they fall in a pit and they burn to death. And then we can have our iron. This farm was made by Day6, go check them out on YouTube. Anyways, let's start with the main build. Luckily, we have Light Metica to make our life easier. Alright, so the main build of the farm is done. Now we have to get the zombies and the villagers inside of the farm. For those of you that are wondering, what am I seeing on your screen? I use a mod where I can see the spawn chunks. So those big squares right over there are just the spawn chunks. But yeah, let's get some name tags for the zombies. And yeah, uh, you see the name tag? You see it? I've also changed my shepherds into clerics because these bottles right over here can save me when I need them. But yeah, most of the time I only use them on my elytra. So if you see them in my inventory, it's only for my elytra. Getting zombies in there should be easy. I'm gonna use trapdoors so I can trap them inside of here because mobs think that trapdoors are normal blocks. Oh my god, no, 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 please. What is going on? Just go inside of it. Oh, okay. There we go. So the first one is fixed. For some reason, they come with like a hundred zombies. Like, relax, bro. Relax. 
All right, your turn. Yeah. Oh, uh, we got more than one. Uh, I don't think that's a problem. All right, now we have to put the villagers inside of it. Uh, but this setup right over here is kind of wrong. I have no idea how to fix this. <laughs> bro, bro, bro. Luckily, I got one villager out of it. I, I messed this thing up. Oh my god, come on. How am I... Oh no! I got out of it. Uh, there might be some villagers that died, but uh, let's all talk about this. Okay, so we got the first guy down over here. Uh, getting him in is harder than I thought. Like, come on, go in... Oh, finally, he's in. We're gonna have to do that like two more times in that cell and then we have to do it seven more times in the other cells. When that's done, the farm should be working. Alright, that should be it. The farm should be wor- Oh, you can hear it already. It's working. Allegedly, this farm makes you 70 stacks of iron ingots an hour, but uh, I, I don't know about that. Now, we can go far away as we want. This farm will still be working because it's in the spawn chunks. So, the iron farm is completed. Now, we can go to the next farm on our list. It's pretty late right now. I'm going to sleep, but before I go to sleep, I'm going to do an overnight AFK session at the raid farm. I want to get to level 1000 before I end this episode. All right, I have afk overnight. I've extended the storage system before I afk so we should have a lot of stuff. Right, let's check this out. Oh my... Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, this... Uh, yeah, uh, well, what can I say? The farm works. One thing that definitely is a scan is this iron farm. Allegedly, it produced 70 stacks per hour, but as you can see, uh, there's no 70 stacks per hour in here. Well, I'm not gonna complain, that's like a lot of iron, uh, but yeah, uh, 70 iron? No, 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 no. I'm gonna clean up this area right over here, and then I'm gonna be creating a shulker farm. Now, a shulker farm is actually really easy to make. The hardest thing is getting the shulker to the overworld. The shulker farm I will be building is by Enix04. This is like the fourth farm of Enix04, but yeah, Enix04, I love you. Shulker farms come in every shape and size, but their mechanics are all the same. Shulkers can hit themselves with their projectiles. Well, of course, they do that by accident. When a shulker hits itself, it can duplicate itself. So the way this farm works is by placing a bunch of portals and glass walls next to each other. In the middle of the farm, we lock a shulker with a bunch of snowmen. The shulker will try to hit the snowman, but it will hit itself. The shulker will duplicate, but the places where it can duplicate to will send it through a portal. On the other side, we have a system where the shulker will teleport to a block, but it will get stuck in a boat under another block. The shulker will die by suffocation and it will drop shulkers. In the nether side, we also have a shulker bank, so when the shulker in the overworld dies, we can get the new one back very easily. This farm is built by Ian X04, and again, shout out to Ian X04, he's the best Minecraft YouTuber. Anyways, I'm gonna start making this thing, I hope it goes smoothly. And by the fact we're gonna be working with shulkers, I know this thing will not go smoothly. Alright, alright, the farm is working, my friends. As you can hear, the shulker is getting hit and it's basically duplicating itself. What the hell? No. No. Ooh, what? Ooh. No, 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 no. I think my farm is gonna break. No. Oh, no. The shulker got out. Are you serious? Oh. Oh my god. Yeah, sometimes I uh, hate Minecraft, to be honest. All over again. All over again, my friends. Oh my god. Okay, I got it fixed. Uh, I have to be careful now. I do not want this thing to blow up again. Okay, it's working. As you can see behind me, the shulker farm is done. Uh, th that was not fun. To be honest, that was not fun. 
the the amount of times i had to get shulkers was insane the next farm i'm gonna be making is pretty simple the farm after this farm requires a bunch of string so the most logical thing i can do is turn a spider spawner into a string farm this mineshaft right over here is literally underneath my spawn as you can see it has a zombie spawner and a spider spawner next to each other now to be honest i'm only interested in the spider spawner so i will ignore the zombie spawner all right i'm gonna turn this into a spider spawner three two one there we go the farm is done we have a spider farm uh yeah, yeah the spiders can hit me sometimes but i have to fix that real quick i'm gonna make this place look a little bit nicer and then i'm gonna afk so i can get some strings all right the spider farm was not that interesting but the next one is i'm gonna be creating a bee farm that's gonna give me a bunch of honey now the honey blocks are actually needed in a lot of machines i want to do after this farm so that's why i need to make it right now Throughout this episode, I've gathered a bunch of beehives. For the honey farm, I'm gonna need a bunch of beehives filled with a bunch of bee. In total, about 64 beehives. Breeding bees is actually really easy. All you have to do is lock a bunch of bees up and then just breed them constantly. While you're breeding them, you should make more beehives and eventually you will have a bunch of them. So that's the first thing I will be doing. Alright, I might have gone overkill with the amount of bees I created, but uh, you can never have more than enough bees. All of these shulker boxes are filled with beehives and in every beehive we have 3 bees. I'm gonna need a stack of beehives for the farm I'm gonna be creating. Just like every other farm in this world, the beehive is by enx 4 So, the bee farm is actually pretty easy. All it is is a big loop. We have droppers, dispensers, hoppers and beehives. The droppers throw the bottles, the dispensers try to use the bottles on the beehives. If it has honey, it takes the honey. If not, it passes the bottle to the next one. The honey bottles also get passed to the next one. Eventually, at one hopper, there will be an item sorter that takes out the honey bottle out of the system. This farm is easy and compact. Shout out to Enix04. You're the best guy. Alright, the bee farm is done. These top chests have to be filled with glass bottles. Now, I did place a couple of them in and the farm is actually working, but we have to stack this thing up with a bunch of bottles. Now, you can craft bottles, but I have a better idea. The raid farm we have actually produces bottles. Now, we have an item sorter at the top, so if we change the input to bottles, we can catch a lot of bottles. So if I clear out all of these chests and then go AFK at the raid farm, when I come back, I should have many, many stacks of bottles. All right, I've afk for a couple of hours. Now let's check how many bottles we got. All chests should be full, to be honest. Let's see. Yeah, perfect. We have more than enough of bottles. Now, the good thing is we never need to get more bottles because the system is a loop. When we use the bottles, we can just put it back into the system. So the honey farm is basically done. We have a bunch of bottles for the system. All of the bottles will stay inside of the system and we don't need to get any more bottles. The next farm we'll be making is a slime farm. I'm going to be making a slime farm that does not require you to clear out any chunks. The farm is designed by more things and it's really, really easy to make. Slimes spawn in two ways. One way is in swamps. Slimes naturally spawn in swamps at nighttime. The second way slimes spawn are in slime chunks. In your world, you have a bunch of slime chunks. In these chunks, slime can spawn. When you use slime chunks, you usually have to dig out a big area. I'm gonna be relying on swamps. All this farm really is is a big room with an iron golem in the middle. Slimes spawn in this room because of the swamp and they will go towards the iron golem. They get dropped in a hole that is made out of magma blocks. Eventually, they burn and die. All the player has to do is AFK on the top. Shout out to more things for this amazing farm. I'm gonna make the slime farm AFK a little bit and then I'll bring you guys back when I'm done.
Alright, I had a 15 minute AFK session. Let's see how much stuff we got. Now, I do know the rates of this farm, so we should... Yeah, we should have a lot. There we go. In 15 minutes, we got three stacks of slime box. This farm is done. The slime farm is completed. And I, I think that's more than enough slime for this episode. The next farm on the list is a sugarcane farm. The design is by Sleeping Prince and it's super easy to create. The sugarcane farm is nothing more than a big long field of sugarcane. On one side, we have a storage system that is under a flying machine. Every time a redstone timer goes off, the flying machine goes from one side to the other. On top of the flying machine, we have minecarts with hoppers. These collect the sugarcane that gets destroyed by the flying machine. Once the flying machine arrives at the other side, it gets pushed back. Eventually, it will dock back to the storage system, drop off all of the sugarcane, and wait for the timer to go off again. Very simple and clean design. Again, shout out to Sleeping Prince. So let's get this thing going. Until now, every single wood I needed for every farm, I gathered with my hands, and uh, I have to get that changed. The next farm I will be making is a tree farm. There are a lot of different tree farms, but I'm gonna be making a very simple one. Can you guess who designed it? My friend, if you said ENX04, you are right. The tree farm is very simple. We have the player station. Here we spam bone meal and saplings on a piece of dirt. The player gets fed bone meal by a dispenser. On top of the tree we have a TNT duper. Once the tree explodes, all of the drops goes down under the farm and gets back up through a water stream. The player is on top of this stream. Because of this, we can collect the saplings. The rest of the items go inside of the chest. And that's it. This farm is very simple. Shout out to ENX04. I'm gonna make this farm and then I'm gonna upgrade the wither skeleton farm storage system because I need a lot of bones. After that, I first have to AFK at the Wither Skeleton Farm to get a lot of bone meal and then I will AFK at the Tree Farm. This tree farm is insane. We did a 15 minute AFK session. Let's take a look at the amount of wood we have. Oh, we have a lot of wood. Now, the downside to tree farms are the uses of the bone meal. We need a bunch of bone meal. The sugarcane farm also is working. As you can see, we got a bunch of sugarcane. And the honey farm also is producing a bunch of honey. As you can see, I already made a ton of honey blocks. I've also been turning all of my ingots into blocks. And as you can see, we have a bunch of iron. And of course, the shulker farm is also working. We have a bunch of shulker shells. Now, we are almost ready. We are down to our last two farms. The next farm that I will be making is a gold farm. The farm that I will be building is not hard to make, but it is annoying because we are going to be using magma blocks. But the good thing about this farm is that it's going to produce us so much gold. With the amount of gold we're going to get, we can't use normal chests. We're going to have to use shulker loaders. The gold farm is not that hard. We have platforms made out of magma. On those platforms, only zombified piglings can spawn. In the middle, we have a tower that is made out of trapdoors and turtle eggs. The zombified piglings will try to go there, but they will go through a portal. In the overworld, there is a bridge that takes them back to the nether. Over in the nether, they will be instantly placed in boats. Because of this, new piglings will instantly spawn in. Using the boat method, a ton of piglings will spawn in every second. The farm was made by Dashpum4. You're a legend, my friend.
This farm is insane. I've used it for 20 minutes and my ears hurt. Let's take... Oh my god. We... Two shulker boxes already filled. Oh! Uh, okay, so I think the shulker box thingy is broken, but... Bro, look at the amount. Huh? Alright, the shulker roller is probably broken because in the first chest we should have normal ingots. Yeah, I, I can't figure it out. In this chest, normal ingots should be in there, but... Uh... Yeah, whatever. I have no idea how to fix this thing. I'll have to hop in a creative world later on to try to understand this farm. But for now, it should be okay. I think the ingots go in the last chest right over here. I, I figured it out. The ingots were going into the last chest while they're supposed to go in the first chest. I was probably not focused when I was watching the tutorial, but that's okay. Bro, I made like at least 8 stacks of gold blocks in 20 minutes. That's insane. At the moment, I'm collecting every single color in Minecraft. That's because I'm going to be making every single color of concrete. The last farm on my list is a concrete slash sand duper. This is not your normal concrete slash sand duper. This is a two in one farm. This is a very complex farm, but all you need to know is that at the end of this farm, we will have every single type of concrete, every single type of concrete powder, and every type of sand. Well, there are only two types of sand, but you know what I mean. The last farm is the most complex one. In the overworld, we have a gravity duper. Basically, it takes items and throws it in the end, but in the overworld, that item still exists. So it basically dupes blocks. We can dupe everything from sand to concrete. In the end, we have a concrete maker. We can turn on a lever that will take all of the concrete powder and turn it into concrete. This is by a complex machine that makes concrete fly up a water stream and destroy it by TNT. Bro, this thing is too complex to explain. We can also leave the lever off and that will just collect the items that get duped. The duper is set up that we can dupe every single color of concrete and sand. All of the items fall down a hole and go through a water stream inside of a large auto sorter. And yeah, that was the gravity duper slash concrete maker. The duper is designed by Scorpio, the converter is designed by Mont and the sorter by myself. Shout out to all of them. As soon as this cactus is melted, we should have every single color in the game. Alright, that's it. Now we have to turn all of these colors into to concrete red sand let me take you and in this chest we have every single type of concrete and every type of sand and now we can go ahead and start making this farm bro i'm so happy i don't want to make any more farms in this world but let's not lie to each other we probably know i'm gonna be making some more farms later on